Hello everyone, today I'm going to start playing Highway Blossoms. I've had this game recommended to me by a few different people. And, well, just decided that now's the time to play. And I might as well comment about it while I'm at it. So, uh, yeah, thanks for joining me if you're here. And I don't really know much about the story or what to expect. I just have heard more or less good things and thought it was time to play and find out for myself. Anyways, I'll be as I'm going through the game, I'll, I'll be reading the dialogue and I'll be commenting on it. For those of you who are familiar with my Kindred Spirits on the Roof videos, you already know my style. But for those of you who don't really like the commentary or want something that's just a straight playthrough of the game, this isn't gonna be, this isn't what this is. You're not gonna find that here. And, uh, and yeah, I'm excited. Excited to see what uh, all the hype's been about. So let us begin. The music ends, the cassette clicks to a stop. I've listened to it so many times, I've even memorized the placement of the static from the song's original broadcasts. I'm worried the deck might eventually eat the tape, but it never happened to him no matter how many times he played the damn thing, so I'm not too scared. It used to drive me crazy. Every day he played it over and over again. Sure, he would throw on something different after a few loops, but soon enough he'd switch back and the cycle would repeat itself. Sometimes I think he would do it just to mess with me. I would be in the back, in bed, smothering a pillow over my head to block out the music. He would just turn it up louder, even during all-nighters. That was so like him. Even near the end, when we had to finally settle down, he was still pulling that kind of crap. I'd come home from school sometimes, and the police would be at the door because the entire block had called in a noise complaint. He said it was because he was hard of hearing, but I knew he did it just to get a rise out of the old grouches who lived nearby. I think that was his worst fear, ending up just a bitter sack of bones. So he did everything in his power to be the exact opposite, right up until the end. Of course, that meant I would always deal with the fallout. I can't imagine what the neighbors thought. Seeing a little girl go door to door, apologizing because some old man decided it, decided it would be funny to put plastic flamingos all over their award-winning lawns. I can't help but smile, just a little, even if it does hurt. I take a sip of my coffee. Outside, outside a heat haze shimmers over the never-ending oceans of sand. So much desert. So the one thing that I do know about this story going in is that it takes place in the American Southwest and I have a great affinity for the Southwest. So I'm excited to see uh, what little, little, uh, um, how do you say it? What little uh, homages might be, homage isn't the right word, but what little uh, details might be added into the story about the Southwest, if anything at all noticeable. But yeah, I love the Southwest a lot. Even Roswell was just rock, sand, and a few shacks. All alien themed, of course. Though that is a, a really uh, 
uh, a wrong assumption about the Southwest is that it's all desert. There's a lot of mountains too, and a lot of snow. Didn't see any UFOs though. I'm not used to how dry everything is. Even with the AC on high enough to rip off my eyebrows, I'm still all sweaty. Guess that's what happens when you laze around in snowy Colorado for a decade. No, listen, there's snowy parts in Arizona too, and in New Mexico. Go to Santa Fe. Santa Fe is very high elevation. It's not that much different than Colorado. In that regard, the desert is a nice change of scenery. I don't exactly hate it. New sites are nice, especially, especially since his health didn't allow him to do a lot of traveling when I was a little girl. I could see myself getting used to this. Well, maybe another 15 years when I have everything paid off. Ah, damn it, Amber. Snap out of it. You can worry about that later. This isn't your trip, so stop being so selfish. Dude, so does Amber have uh, student loans to, play, to pay like most of us do? <laughs> That sucks. Actually, my student loans are what keep me traveling. Or my debt. I shouldn't say student loans. My lack of money, as I don't have student loans. But my lack of money makes me, me travel more than stay sedentary. I push the eject button. I take the tape out and look it over. Probably for the 20th time today. Years worth of brown stains and greasy fingerprints are smudged all over, making it feel grimy to the touch. It still works like a charm, though. There are more cassettes in the glove compartment. A mixture of mine and his. Mostly his. I should just play one of those and get it over with. My hand gravitates towards the latch. It would be okay, right? No. I snatch my hand away from the latch and flip the tape over. Once again, I find myself staring. With a sigh, I stick it back into the deck. I reach towards the play button, taking another look to see if the road is still clear. Like always, it... That is some crazy font there. It's a nice visual effect. Actually, it's kind of annoying. It's kind of like one of those PowerPoint project, project, PowerPoint presentations you see where people use crazy fonts. Or is that just my own pet peeve? Yeah! Is it? Oh God, did we hit someone? I slam on the brakes, their shriek piercing my ears. I glance at my rear view mirror, my rear view mirror. A glance at my rear view mirror shows a girl cringing next to an ancient looking car, covering her ears as I screech down the road. Making a U-turn of dubious legality, I pull up in front of her car, killing the motorhome's engine. I hop out and shield my eyes from the blazing New Mexico sun. Only now do I realize how precious the AC really is. It doesn't take more than several steps before the girl comes bouncing up to me with a look of relief. Oh my god, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! I was starting to think no one would ever stop! With each word, she gets a little closer, until we're finally within touching distance of each other her smiling face now filling my entire field of vision. Her bright auburn hair is done in a girlish side tail, glistening beneath specks of sweat. Standing out in the heat has made her round, pale cheeks a sun-kissed red, but she still looks put together, like the desert would sooner melt her than do any real damage to her looks. I almost feel embarrassed to be in front of someone who dresses so cute, her frilly yellow top and skirt putting my red t-shirt and khakis to shame. It's all brought together by one thing, though. Her eyes. They're blue. Vividly blue. Deep and rich. Complementing the traces of her misty perfume as she gets closer and closer. Too close, too close, too close. I scrambled back and coughed trying to hide my awkwardness. N no problem. What's she doing out here alone? Driving through? Hell, is she even alone? That's really shitty to get stuck in the desert with car troubles. I hope she has some water or something. I mean, clearly she's not dehydrated and she hasn't melted yet, so 
She's probably fine. But that is no laughing matter. Oh man. Being stuck in the desert. I peer off into the plains on the side of the road, half expecting a guy to pop up from his hiding place now that some idiot has fallen off their fallen for their trap. The idiot being me, of course. But, much to my surprise, no one does. Instead, the girl continues to stare at me, smiling as she patiently waits for my response. I glance behind her, focusing on her car. So what's the issue? Your car breakdown? I think so, yeah. I was driving and it just kind of... Stopped? Yeah. She lowers her head in shame, eyes fixated on her feet, kicking the dust around her. I'm not much of a car buff, but I can take a look at it. Her head pops back up and life returns to her eyes. Oh wow, could you? Yeah, can't promise that I can do anything, but I can at least check it out. That'd be great! Alright, first things first then. This thing looks even older than my motorhome. It was probably a nice car once upon a time, but with a dented grill, multiple scratches, and faded murky green color, it's hard to believe such a cute girl was driving it. I slide into the fabric seat and start the ignition. I don't know too much about how this stuff works, just enough to keep the motorhome from giving out, but I can't imagine it's too significant of an issue. Probably just a dead battery or... Oh boy, what's happening? No gas, oh, that's the worst. That is the worst. Did no one ask AAA? Guess not. I guess you need money for that though, that's true. We've established at least Amber doesn't have money for that stuff. And I guess our, our female companion doesn't either. A single car passes by, cooling us with a, a refreshing gust of wind sprinkled with dirt and sand. It, is something wrong? Is this a joke? Oh no, did I break it? Uh, no, it's just out of gas. What? No way! Dad said I should have filled up before I left. Is she for real? Why is this girl in the middle of nowhere by herself? Excuse me, we're also, you're also, Amber, in the middle of nowhere by yourself. As if trying to force all the ideas into the center of, the, of her brain, the girl grabs her head and whines under her breath. Aw oh, man, and I didn't charge my phone either. What am I gonna do? I'd offer her mine, but I've never had a cell phone in my life. Seemed like you'd have to be pretty absent-minded to forget that, though. She whines once more and turns to me. Hey, this might seem a little weird. Oh no. But could you take me somewhere nearby so I can get some gas? And what do you know? She actually did it! How long did you say you've been stuck out here? Hmm, I don't know, a few hours maybe? I've been trying to wave down everyone who drives by, but you were the first to stop. Hold on, everyone? Yep. This heat must have fried her brain. Does she have any idea how dangerous that is? That's probably not a good idea, you know. She cocks her head to the side and gives me a look of genuine curiosity, like it wasn't obvious or something. Huh? Why? Well, you know. A cute young girl alone in the middle of the desert? It's just asking for trouble. But you're a cute young girl alone in the middle of the desert. W what? Her comeback takes me off guard and I turn away a little, avoiding eye contact. Yeah, but that's different. A smile returns to her face, the same bright one that she showed me when, we, when I first pulled over. I'm still avoiding eye contact, but she leans over to the direction I'm looking and continues to smile. So do you think you can give me a ride? I don't know. Please, it shouldn't take very long. Really, could you, 
I don't know. If that was me, I couldn't... My conscience wouldn't let me leave someone alone in the desert who needed help. That, that's deadly. She needs gas or water or something, but she needs gas, most importantly, to get out of there. I guess I should also say I, I hope... Uh, it's still very early in the game, so maybe I'll hold my comments about the characters. But, but I do hope they deepen a little more. This is very... We're starting off very tropey. You know, naive girl who's pretty and cute and good-natured and trusts anyone to come and help her. And then we have our protagonist who's kind of stubborn and a little closed off and is clearly dealing with some, some pain and some grief. Uh, who I imagine is probably going to eventually warm up to said uh, good-natured girl. But I hope there are deeper reasons and we have more exploration of that. But this is still early in the game, so I can't, I can't be too critical right now. This girl, it's like she didn't even listen to what I said. Still better than me than some psycho. Besides, it's not like a small detour will make me late or anything. I guess it's fine. I'm not in too big of a rush anyway. Yay! Before I'm even finished, she's springing off the ground, bouncing to the motorhome. Hey, wait! But it's already far too late, as she somehow made her way into the motorhome before its owner, even finding the time to give me a small wave from the passenger seat. I heave a heavy sigh, rubbing my temple, as I climb back up into the driver's seat. The key is still dangling in the ignition. I wrench it around and the motorhome roars to life, forcing a surprise squeak out of the girl. By the way, my name is Marina. Thank you so much for helping me out. Amber, don't mention it. Careful not to hit her car, I back the RV up and turn it around, sending us in my original direction. I put on my sunglasses and reach for the play button on the cassette player, finally giving in to temptation. But R Marina starts up again. So I don't know a lot about visual novels, but this one has a lot of animation to it, it feels like. Which is a nice touch. Nice touch. Why aren't we going the other way? Wasn't there a station a little ways back? It was a bit more than a little ways back. I saw a sign a few miles ago that said there was a station not too far from here, so we're going there. Oh wow, I didn't even see that. You're really observant. Yeah, or you're just really oblivious. Not really. Silence falls upon the motorhome, the roaring of the engine and the swishing of the wind from outside being the only sounds. I take that as my cue and reach for the cassette player once more, finally give... How do you even drive this thing? It's huge! Marina spreads her arms out like an eagle unfurling its wings, almost bopping me on the head in the process. I clear my throat and grab her arm from the air, gently placing it on her lap. It's not that bad. You get used to it. She tilts her head to the side and gives a light grunt as if saying, That's so, and we return to the silence before. Again, I reach for the cassette play. So what are you doing out here? Are you going camping? Seems like what you're doing is fun. I take a deep breath and hold it on and as long as possible before letting it out. Just traveling. What about you? Why are you out here? Oh, well, it's kind of silly. She scratches her head and lets out an embarrassed laugh before staring at her feet, quieting down, and surprisingly enough, staying quiet. Well, looks like that worked. Oh, but that's silly. Sorry, I'm already nitpicking and we're so, so early in the story, I just... I know people have reasons for keeping their secrets, but it just feels very... predictable for a story like this to where we don't know why Marina's out here and it's some secret that she's going to keep from us that's probably going to be revealed 
like towards the climax or something and I don't know we'll see we'll see no spoilers for those of you who already have played through this I reach for the cassette player one last time I stop for a moment to look at the glove department and then Marina who looks lost in thought before finally pressing play A pleasant little chime greets me as I enter the station, Marina trailing closely behind. The drive was quiet after I turned the music on. Turning the tables on her and asking what she was doing out there seemed to throw her off. I didn't mean to come off as cold as I did. It's just been ages since I've had a conversation beyond accepting some half-hearted condolences, though to be fair I haven't really wanted to hold one. The guy behind the counter is busy ringing someone up, so I set out in search of a gas can. The store is one of those big mini-mart places, made specifically for travelers. It's surprisingly clean for a place surrounded by sand. Every corner has an unnatural, sanitary shine accompanied by the scent of the citrus cleaning product. I love those big mini-mart places for travelers. Since I do a lot of traveling and moving myself, those are always the best. They have showers sometimes, variety of food. They're wonderful. Hey, they have the cola flavor here. I turn to find Marina clutching the slushy machine, her eyes widening like a cat's when tempted with yarn. Don't most gas stations have it? She shakes her head, but doesn't take her eyes off the machine. Uh Uh-uh. All the places back home only had cherry and raspberry. When we got sick of them, we just had to mix them together. But... Marina finally turns to me, wearing a face of pure, concentrated sadness. I left my wallet in my car. Oh, really? Really? You leave your car and you... Who's buying the gas? And who's buying the gas can if you left your wallet in the car? It's the saddest thing I've ever seen. Just looking at her, I can feel my heart break. Wait a second! How are you expecting to pay for the gas? I I don't know, I just remembered. How did she last five minutes out in the desert? Fine, I guess I'll pay for it. R- really? Yeah, yeah, and grab yourself one of those slushies too. But make it a small one. Her pure, concentrated sadness melts into pure, unconcentrated happiness. You're the best, Amber. She grabs a cup and and holds down the button until the slushy overflows and drips down the side. I was going to pay for the gas anyway, but I'm hoping the drink makes up for the drive over. I spot the gas cans and with Marina happily sipping from the straw, grab one and head for the counter. The guy at the register is still ringing up the same girl. Lines of flimsy plastic bags line the counter, filled with a mixture of off-brand junk food and gardening tools. He scans the items as the girl digs through her wallet, her bandana wrapped head pressing a phone against her shoulder. Aren't you supposed to be the badass mechanic? What good are you if you're not? She swipes out a card and hands it to the cashier, more interested in staring at her nails than looking at him. How the hell would I know? Have the squirt check underneath if you're so curious. On the other end of the line, I can hear the faintest of squabbling. I can't make out anything they're saying, but the tone sounds worlds more tolerable than the girls. If it's that old, then I say do it. Cash is cash. It's not like anyone's gonna care. You better not take as long as last time, though. I'll be waiting for you slackers outside. Dude, she's harsh. Sounds like she knows him, though. Maybe. Or she's dealt with him before. The girl slips her phone back into the crevices of her dangerously unzipped jumpsuit. What little clothing she has on underneath looks like it's going to burst from the slightest movement. I did not realize what she was wearing was a jumpsuit. It's hard, it's a little tough to tell, but I can kind of see it now. (sighs) 
yeah, interesting choice. Not my type, especially with that personality, but it's hard for me to do other to do anything other than stare. The attendant reaches out to help with the bags, but the girl snaps them away before he can. She shoots him with a heated glare that burns straight through the man and into the wall behind them. Turning around, the girl looks at us for a second before rolling her eyes, then marches out the door, the bags weighing her down as they nearly scrape the ground. Yeah, definitely not my type. Good luck! Marina and I set the can and nearly empty slushy on the counter. Will that be all? Yeah, sorry if we're more boring than that other girl. The attendant hacks out a dry cackle and scans the gas can. He flicks his only ponytail behind his sh oh, his oily ponytail from it there. Thought said only ponytail, and I was like, well, do you think, do people generally have more than one ponytail? He flicks his oily ponytail behind his shoulder and then rings up Marina's drink. Been a lot of folks passing through and stocking up for the past few days. It's been a good change of pace. I'm guessing that's why you girls are here too. Marina eases towards the counter, nudging herself tightly between me and a rack, her hands creeping over to the slushy. That's a really nice effect. I like the zooming in. I don't... I don't know. So I don't play a lot of visual novels. I'm still very new to these types of games, but that seems not typical. Like, it seems like a nice touch, but something that I don't see a lot still. I think Marina really wants that slushy, though. For what? I'm just heading out to California. If I don't end up driving myself insane first. You mean you, did, you don't know? The attendant freezes, forgetting about the scanner in his hand. Blinding red light beams from it onto my chest. About what? Why the treasure? Marina's hands stop just shy of grabbing the cup. Treasure? The clerk's chubby face morphs, morphs into a grin. Yet telling me that you girls haven't heard of the treasure in the journal? I have. I frown, embarrassed. Marina looks to the floor again, her cheeks flushing red. I guess she's always just this forward. Well, I heard about it on the news. It's kind of why I drove down here. You drove out in the middle of the desert for treasure? Sorry, but you've lost me. Not just any treasure, Missy. The miner's treasure. He says it like that should clarify what he meant. I stare at him. He stares back. Marina sips the last dregs of her slushy. You honestly don't know? Not a clue. Are you going to change that? <laughs> That's snarky. <laughs> a little feisty, ain't ya? Not really. Just have stuff to do. Fair enough. A little while back, some folks were going through the trash in their garage. As fate would have it, they came across an old journal. Turns out the thing belonged to their great-uncle. Or maybe it was their great-grandfather. I don't know. Some dead old man. I cut him off with a cough, a polite hint for him to either get on with it or quit his yammering. Despite no, apparently knowing all this, Marina continues with the rapt attention to, to... Marina continues with rapt attention. Apologies about that, folks. Sometimes her drink makes that annoying slurping sound again. Sorry, y'all. Try keeping it short. Anyway, after flipping through it, they found out that he struck ri it rich during the gold rush. If he struck it rich, then wouldn't the family know about it? They'd have to be pretty well off, right? Oh, I can answer that. He went back home to Missouri without any gold and told all his friends he hid it. By now the slushy was all gone. Marina tries for one last slip, but all that sucked through the straw is air. She peers down into the cup and blows out a small sigh. No one believed him, though. To be fair, who would believe you? 
if you found all this gold, all this money, you're like, I hid it. I didn't take any for myself. No one would believe you. But I do have to say, I really appreciate that the treasure is, you know, yeah, some my if some miner f struck struck it great, found a lot of gold, decided to take that treasure and bury it or to hide it somewhere. I, I appreciate that being the treasure than something like really ignorant and mystical and exotic and disrespectful to like Native American populations or other other indigenous groups. So I was a little afraid of that at first, but if it's a miner in, in gold, that's that's a little better. That's a lot better. I raise an eyebrow. If even this girl knows about it, then I must be more out of the, out of the loop than I thought. Well, now it looks like sisters here have been doing her research. Mm-hmm. The attendant leans into the counter and smirks. Story goes he wanted to eventually move his family out west and dig his gold back up along the way, but kicked it before he could. He slides his thumb along his neck and makes a cheesy sound effect to go with it. Marina giggles, but I just keep staring. The folks that found the journal ended up selling it to some hotshot publishing house. Now everyone wants to retrace the steps and find the treasure. Shipments have been selling like hotcakes. Just got ours last week. He points to a rack of identical books sitting by the door. A sign hanging above it reads, Treasure of the Desert, a miner's journey. Take part in the new gold rush. Yeah, that'll stick in people's heads. And people are really buying into this? Sure are. I've worked here for over 20 years, and never have I seen so many people passing through. Even the Banshee before you was here for some supplies and a journal. Sure, okay. This is a hoax if I've ever seen one. And where is the supposed treasure? No one knows. It's all scattered around the desert. They say, they say the journal has hints to its whereabouts. Uh-huh. Marina, you said this is why you drove out here? Yep, that's right. But you don't really believe the treasure exists, do you? Sure I do. She pauses to think. At least, I want to. But wouldn't it be super cool if there was treasure? Sure, it would be cool. But there's a good chance it, chance it isn't. And even if it were, do you know where to start looking? No, not really. I never got that far. I don't even have a copy of the journal. She lowers her head like she knows there's a good chance what I'm saying is true. But I have to try. Her voice is soft and quiet, but there's a faint glow of determination behind it. It makes me feel ashamed for scolding, but the idea that she dropped everything for treasure is insane. To her credit, she did a little research, but that's canceled out by driving into the desert without a full tank of gas. She wasn't prepared at all. The people who care about her must be worried sick. I barely even know her and I'm worried. Ah, uh, don't be too hard on her, Missy. After all, who can resist a good treasure hunt? He looks to Marina and gives a big gummy grin, courtesy of his missing teeth. Ain't that right, sister? Marina springs back with a smile of her own. That's right. Rolling my eyes, I reach into my pocket and pass some crumpled bills to the clerk. Yeah, well, I'll believe it when I see it. He shrugs and stuffs the cash into the register, though now I'm just paying for the tank in an empty cup. I pocket the change. I give a casual wave from the exit. That should be good enough, thank you. Marina follows, though a bit more animated, waving her arm like a fan as she says goodbye. Oh, and sister. Yeah? You go ahead and take one of them journals. Free of charge. Really? Marina lights up like a firecracker and bounces up and down like she's a kid again. Yep. Oh, wow. Thanks, mister. In one swift motion, she swipes one of the remaining books off the rack so fast that I swear my eyes are skipping frames. Hey, Amber, look. He gave me one for free. 
Yeah, yeah, I see it. I tune out the chattering and nod as we walk out to the parking lot so we can finally get the fuel. I think I'll stop there for this video. Seems like a good place. So we got a few things going on, a bit about the premise. We do know why Marina's out here in the middle of nowhere. That was not something that was, that was gonna be saved for tension and the climax at the end, which is great. Cause that's so done, overdone. Um, but yeah, I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care.